Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a gear and wardrobe walkthrough that's inspired by the hit HBO series, The Last of Us, which is also based off a video game. Season one is now concluded. I really enjoyed watching the show. There was a lot of hype going in. I'd never played the video games, but I can definitely see why people love both the show and the video game. Really cool storyline. And I enjoyed it so much that there's now a bit of a void left in me without more show to watch. And so I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a thought experiment on what type of gear I might wanna have with me if I found myself in a similar situation to the ones that the characters did. Now, I'm not a survival expert by any means, and you know, I definitely hope that there's no zombie or cordyceps apocalypse coming in the near future, uh, but I just thought it would be fun to kind of just base off what I'd seen in the show and you know what I've seen in other videos to kind of put together some of the things that I might wanna have with me, but definitely curious to hear everyone's thoughts in the comments on gear that I left out or that I shouldn't carry with me other suggestions from people who have more experience in the outdoors or maybe working in more kind of hazardous environments, let me know. Before jumping into the video, I wanted to give a quick overview of The Last of Us in case you're not familiar with the show or the video game that it's based of. I'm not going to go into any spoilers or even you know very specific plot points to not impact the viewing or playing experience for anybody who's looking to kind of take a look at those in the near future. Basically, it is a survival and kind of apocalypse story. There's been an outbreak in this world, uh, kind of a viral fungal outbreak that creates zombie-like creatures that can infect others, and so it's taken over the world. You know, the situation is pretty dire, and the story follows a couple of characters as they make their journey across the country. And so, you know, the country has been ravaged. There's, in addition to the threats of the virus and the plague, there is also raiders. Um, so, you know, those bands of humans, there's a lot of limited supplies, a lot of conflict, rough terrain. And those are the things that I sort of kept in mind as I picked my gear for this video, as you know, that's the type of thing that I might be doing is traveling a lot by foot, exploring abandoned buildings, scavenging for supplies, maybe having to run and hide from people who wanted to do me harm. So pretty rough environment. And so I picked gear that's durable, versatile, but also pretty simple as for a lot of the show, you can tell that the characters are actually on foot, walking for long distances. And I definitely wanted to keep in mind with the gear that I selected. To kick things off, I'll first talk about the wardrobe that I would have if I found myself in the situation that the characters are in. So as far as pants, I would definitely wanna have a long pair of pants versus shorts as you know they're gonna offer a little bit more protection for the various environments that I might find myself in, I'll probably be in a few different climates, going from hot to cold, going through forests. And so I feel like long pants would definitely offer just a little bit more versatility. The ones that I have here are the Proof Rover pants. I've featured these in a few videos before, and I really love the style of these pants. They're offered in a slim and straight version. I have the slim version here. Of course, fashion wouldn't be as big of a concern in this newer world, uh, but it's a good fit for me. I really like the fabric and the style of the Rover pant. This is a updated kind of work pants, so it's gonna have a little bit more of that durability. It's meant to be used in a more kind of active setting for exploring, so the fabrics, in addition to being durable, are gonna offer plenty of comfort. They have a little bit of stretch so that it's easy to kind of move around, hike, climb on stuff. I also like that they're a little bit warmer than some of the other technical and travel pants that I, that I tend to use. Uh, so they'll work a little bit better in that colder climate if I happen to get there. They're not super thick pants, but they'll just give a little bit more protection. And then as far as shirts, I'll of course likely have a Merino shirt. I'm currently wearing the Proof 72 Hour Merino. And Merino clothing, as we've talked about in many videos, is super versatile for traveling. But in this situation, additional benefits come as far as, you know, odor resistance and being able to wear it for multiple days on end without having to wash it very durable, temperature regulating, so whether you're in a hot or cold climate, the shirt will adapt with you, and it's a good layering piece, just kind of as a base to start with. If I'm in a hotter setting, probably the only thing I'm wearing, but even if I go somewhere colder, it can help with layering. And then speaking of layering, I might also have something like the travel shirt from the Passport collection that Huckberry recently released. And really any long sleeve button down shirt like this might be helpful. Even in a lot of the uh, shots from the game and the show, Joel, the main character, is wearing kind of a button down long sleeve shirt. This one has that sort of technical, versatile vibe. 
very durable, comfortable. It's got a cotton fabric that's gonna give maybe a little bit more warmth than some of the lighter sort of dress shirts that I have in this style. Um, but I like that it's long sleeve so you can you know, wear it to protect yourself from the elements, to provide a little bit more warmth. You can roll the sleeves up if you want to uh, kind of cool down a little bit. It feels very durable. Uh, it also has some additional pocketing. So in this world, definitely focus more on functionality than style. And the shirt just has some additional benefits that I think would be nice to have to pair with something like my Merino shirt. And then of course you have the now very well-known Flint and Tinder wax canvas jacket. This has been prominent in all of the marketing materials and in the show itself. Joel, the main character, can be seen wearing this. And I've been curious to try out the tracker jacket for a while as it's one of the most popular items from Huckberry. Really cool jacket, it's made in the USA from Flint and Tinder. Wax canvas is a material that we've seen in a lot of the bags that I featured on the channel. It's very rugged, long lasting. The fact that it's waxed and can be re-waxed means it's gonna help add some protection from the elements. And this is a piece that's you know very versatile as far as the environments that it can work in. So it's gonna offer a little bit of warmth if you find yourself in a colder climate. It's got the flannel lining on the inside, which is also soft. You can wear a larger jacket on top of it, as they do in the show at one point when it gets really cold. Um, but you know, the long sleeves are gonna offer some of that protection. This material is gonna age very nicely. So as you know, you wear it for a long time, it's not gonna fail on you. It's gonna look good, it's gonna blend in. And it's just a really rugged material. I don't know if it would completely survive a bite from a zombie or something like that, but it definitely makes me feel like I'm gonna be pretty protected. Looks great, it's been very comfortable to wear. The fit is super nice. You can close it, you can open it. So, you know, it looks great on the main characters in the show, but it's great to see that it also has a lot of functional value if you find yourself in a situation like that where you're gonna be going into a lot of different climates and need a reliable uh, piece of outerwear. And then the last piece of the wardrobe that I'll talk about for this video is footwear. And this is maybe one of the most important parts, particularly if you are traveling by foot, you're gonna be walking for long distances, running into you know, potentially hazardous environments. So you need something that's comfortable, but that's also gonna be pretty rugged. And this is where the Danner and Huckberry collaboration comes in clutch, as these are fantastic boots overall. I've been super impressed with the comfort and the break-in period. Really soft, I've worn them for many hours on end just to kind of test them out for this video and I've never felt fatigued. They are a little bit heavier, but it's a fair trade-off for the comfort that you get out of the shoes. That's one of the main things that stood out to me. Of course, I really like the aesthetic. I think they look great. They have a wax canvas sort of exterior material like the jacket, so they're gonna patina nicely gonna be long lasting. They have Gore-Tex embedded into the shoe, so it's gonna offer water resistance. You definitely don't wanna walk around with wet shoes when you're you know, in this type of situation, so a great benefit there. They have a really comfortable outsole. You're gonna have some traction on the inside. You have some removable uh, padded kind of footbeds that have felt great as I've worn it for a longer period of time. And the shoes offer a lot of support around the ankle, so you can do a lot of different activities. Don't feel like I'm gonna roll it or anything like that. Even the front feels really, I don't know if it's steel toe, but it's really solid. So if you need to kick somebody who's attacking you, a raider, or you know, if a zombie or something tries to bite, you're gonna have a pretty good amount of protection here, which is something that I think is, is really important. So just a great boot overall. Really enjoyed wearing them. I think they look great, as I said. And one note about the sizing is that you do maybe want to size down about a half a size. I normally wear an 11 and a half. I tried the 11 and a half on these and they ended up being quite big. So I'm using an 11. That's felt great. It still feels almost a little bit loose, uh, but I think going down any more than a half a size might make it a little bit tricky to wear. So really great boot. And uh, you know, if you're looking for something reliable, comfortable and stylish, definitely check out Danner on Huckberry. Moving into the gear that I would be carrying with me, first up I will talk about the backpack. And being a backpack enthusiast, very difficult to kind of pick which bag I would want to use. Of course, the one that I would probably gravitate towards the most is a GORUCK bag. I featured them a lot on the channel. The Heritage GR2 that I featured pretty recently is one of the most versatile, durable bags that I've used. Absolutely love the functionality on this. It's also got a pretty subdued aesthetic, so it's not gonna call a ton of attention. Um, and you know, it's got the clamshell style opening, a lot of organization, so really great bag overall. 
I did want to pick something more in the style of the show. I tried to hunt down the actual backpack that was used by the characters in the show, and <laughs> there's not really an exact model that I found. I think some people said that it was actually a custom-built bag that was made by the props department. I found a few on Amazon that looked close to what is on the show, but ultimately, you know, based off what I've used that I would find reliable for this type of situation, I actually went with the Track Bannock, which has, you know, that same sort of heritage rucksack style vibe as the one on the show very reliable and simple which is i think what i would be looking for in this type of situation is a reliable bag that has less things that could potentially break so there's not a lot of zippers on this bag it has metallic buckles and it has a flexible volume which has a lot of benefits you know for when i have to carry a little bit more or a little bit less it still has a pretty sleek appearance so i can be mobile be able to climb stuff, go into tight spaces. It has a wax canvas exterior, so it's gonna be very durable, long lasting, and it also has some nice organization that still allows me easy access to some of the stuff that I need. So really great sort of use cases with the Track Bannock. I'll make sure to include a link to the full review that I did on this, but for now, let's go ahead and actually dive into what I have in here. Starting off on the sides, you have two external kind of water bottle pockets. So in one of them, I have an actual water bottle as in any situation in the world, staying hydrated and having water is gonna be critical. I have a pretty small one here. Might try to have something bigger in a situation where I'm going for a longer distance, but you know, I have something that's durable, that's insulated. This is the same 20 ounce water bottle that I've had in a lot of my other videos. But I think any container to be able to carry water, to boil water if needed, would be good to have. And then on the other side, I have just a simple hatchet that I picked up at a store. I don't have a ton of this type of equipment, uh, but I thought it was a nice size, pretty compact. I use this to, you know, kind of chop some branches off a tree in my house in the past. And so, you know, something simple that you can use if you need to cut firewood or, you know, maybe attack a zombie, get in the head. Um, it also has a paracord handle, which is kind of coming loose. So I'll have to adjust that. Uh, maybe you'd want to have something bigger in this type of situation. Again, not an expert on some of these things, so let me know in the comments what you think about an axe uh, or a hatchet to have, but you know, something that I would want to be able to grab easily. And then moving inside of the bag, one of the things that I like about the Bannock, again, is that it has these buckles, which are made out of metal, and they're not anything that is going to break. So it's a very simple system. It's not always the quickest access, but once you get used to it, you can actually get in and out of the bag pretty smoothly. And I like the adjustability of the straps for this type of situation because I could place a jacket or maybe a sleeping bag here at the top. I can loosen these up, I could tighten it, I could hold other gear. And then I also have easy access to the main area. I don't have to worry about zippers breaking or my gear accidentally spilling out. At the front, you have two slightly taller and deeper compartments. In one of these, I have a filtered straw for drinking water. Um, I probably would need more than one of these. I'm not sure how long or how many use cases I actually have, but it's a good thing to have if you're in a tight spot. You need to have some water that you could drink without it killing you or making you super, super sick. I imagine this is helpful to have. So I have that tossed in there at the front. And then I also have a fixed blade knife. I think that this isn't something that I would normally use as far as EDC per se, a little bit big and intense and scary, but in the situation where I might be hunting or needing something reliable, uh, you know, I know a folding knife might not be as good if you need to, you know, kind of really dig into something, it might break on you. So this is one that I got when I uh, was doing the bespoke post uh, review and, you know, it came in one of the survival boxes and it's a pretty interesting knife. It has a good length, sharp. It also has this kind of hook at the top that is going to be useful for preparing fish, I believe, if you do that. And it's not so big that it would be unwieldy to carry. It has this case that I could place onto my belt if I want to have it a little bit handier. So, you know, just good to have a fixed blade knife. That's one of the things that I saw in the comments for some other videos is that in this type of situation, that's going to be more practical and helpful. So that's what I have in that compartment. Probably also have just a regular pocket knife with me as I typically do. The one that I have been using the most as of late, I featured in a few videos, is the James Brand Carter XL. So two is one, one is none type thing. I might want to have an extra one for, you know, more some of the simpler tasks that I might run into, cutting rope, things like that in this type of situation. So probably have both of those. And then taking a look at the other side, very similarly sized compartment, so a little bit deeper, longer. 
And in here is where I might lose some people. I have something that I don't know how practical it is or useful. It feels like it could come in handy in this type of situation is actually a grappling hook, which <laughs> I, I just needed an excuse to buy a grappling hook on Amazon, okay? I know it might not be the most practical, but it is a fun item. This is a very rugged metallic folding grappling hook that actually pairs with a rope that I also have here on the inside. And so, you know, if there's one thing that I learned from the Boondock Saints is that you always gotta have a rope. It's very helpful. And I think that, you know, I could definitely see some places where in a survival situation, it could come in handy as far as hanging up food to keep it away from wild animals, maybe even to tie somebody up who may mean to do you harm. And then paired with the grappling hook, you might get a little bit of functionality out of it. This is pretty heavy. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna fail on you. I'm sure that there are more practical or better grappling hooks. This was one that I found on Amazon. Seemed pretty interesting. Behind th those compartments, I also have a deeper slip pocket, which I don't really have a ton in here at the moment. I saved most of the space for the main compartment, but I did toss in a survival book. Not being an expert and just, you know, wanting to have something for reference if I found myself in a situation. I really enjoy having these types of resources when I travel or just, you know, in my bags because you never know what you're gonna run into. There's a lot of useful information around, you know, various plants that you need to be on the lookout for, animals, how to treat a variety of wounds, to splint stuff. You know, we all don't have that type of training. And if you need to learn on the spot or need to have some sort of a reference, I definitely want a physical book, nothing that is on a Kindle that I need to charge. And this is also pretty compact. A lot of different versions of that type of book on the market. And then moving into the main compartment, first up, always nice to have the bright orange lining. If I'm in a tough spot under a lot of stress, I definitely wanna be able to see what I wanna grab a little bit more easily. And you do have a quick access pocket at the top, a zippered compartment. You can see how I loaded all of this out in the full review, so I'm not doing a ton of close-ups of the bag itself, but in this compartment, I was able to store some of the smaller items that I would still really wanna have with me, so a headlamp is definitely an essential if you're exploring a dark building or you know if you're needing to do some tasks at night while you're traveling, good to have this so that you can be hands-free. But I also have a regular flashlight that I can have more handheld, it might also work as a self-defense mechanism. If I shine a bright light in somebody's eyes, I can run away. Uh, this is the Arcfelt from Olight, which I featured in a video recently. I like that it's pretty compact, but it still gives you a thousand lumens of brightness. So that's definitely gonna be uncomfortable to look at if you shine it in somebody's face. It also has an, a UV mode. I'm not sure if that would be super useful in this particular situation, but hey, I might find some use case for identifying some cordyceps or just areas that I should kind of be a little bit wary of. This also has a clip so I can put it onto my hat to have a makeshift headlamp if I need to. And it has a magnetic end. So if there's a, you know, something nearby, a metal wall or a car, I can, you know, place it there again to have hands-free ability. This is a rechargeable light. I did go back and forth on what might be more practical for a survival situation, batteries versus rechargeable. Ultimately, I leaned a little bit more towards rechargeable because there are solar powered external batteries that I feel like I could use to recharge this, whereas it might be tough to find the right size batteries in an environment where everything has been ravaged. Um, but yeah, really nice to have a flashlight uh, in any situation, but particularly in this type of um, a situation where I might be exploring some unknown areas. And then in here, I also have a Leatherman multi-tool. There are a ton of different models of the Leatherman tools available. This one is probably not as robust as you know the Leatherman Wave that has all the different tools, uh, but you'd probably wanna have some sort of a multi-tool with pliers and a few different things so that you can handle tasks. And then the last thing that I have in here at the top is actually uh, a lock pick set which I think I saw that in another video and it made a lot of sense that, you know, you might want to be able to access buildings that have been locked for a long time, houses in the situation that are abandoned. If you're scavenging for resources, looking to get something, probably helpful to have this and learn how to use it so that you can stealthily sneak in somewhere. You don't have to break a window or draw attention. So I'm definitely not an expert by any means, but I did buy one of those practice locks and it's something I'll be trying to get better at, hopefully before uh, a situation calls for it. And then in the main compartment, I've set this up with a couple of pouches. Always nice to kind of organize in these larger 
simpler bags that are just kind of a big bucket um, just to be able to find anything that I need a little bit more easily. So first up I have just a medical kit. There's a million of these on Amazon. I think Huckberry has some Uncharted Supply Co some really good options. Um, this is just one of the ones that I found that had pretty decent reviews and it has a variety of bandages, medicines, the equipment that you might need to treat a variety of injuries. So of course this isn't gonna cover everything, but still a nice variety for the type of stuff that you might run into most commonly, at least I believe. It doesn't take up a ton of space either. Uh, I also tossed in an extra tourniquet, uh, which you know it seems to be a very key item in some of the um, videos that I've seen, like the one from Jack Carr, where he was talking about his EDC, he's a Navy SEAL, and he has a tourniquet in his car, in his bags, and so you know you can bleed out very quickly with certain injuries, and it seems like a great thing to have. It doesn't take up a ton of space. Hopefully it won't need it. Um, and then I also have the gravel blanket that I featured in a video a little while back. This packs down to a pretty small size, but it has the same material as a puffy jacket, so it can actually warm you up quite a bit, even though it's meant for travel in this type of situation where maybe um, you know needing to sit on the ground or camp outside, it might be nice to have as an additional layer. It also has water resistant properties so I can cover myself with it. If I get caught in some rain, can make some shelter, makeshift shelter. So not the perfect item for this type of situation. I'm sure there's other tarp like uh, substances or a sleeping bag different types of blankets but this is the one I have and I think you know it's actually pretty versatile and might come in handy and then the last thing that I have in here is another organizational pouch this one is from Maxpedition I've seen these in a lot of EDC videos and it's got a pretty rugged technical appearance opens up fully flat it's got some nice internal organization as far as elastic bands pockets and here I have just some other stuff that's nice to have in a more survival type situation so I have a paracord bracelet I also have a wire saw, which again came with the bespoke post box that I did a little while back, but it takes up almost no space and it seems like it could be a nice alternative to the hatchet that I had or just, just a good thing to have. Um, I also have a lighter. I've seen many of these videos that talk about how helpful it is to have uh, a simple lighter. They're reliable and easy way to potentially start a fire if you need to for safety, for cooking, um, or you know if you're needing to interact with a new group of people, maybe uh, somebody smoking, you can offer a light. So a very simple, cheap thing to have, nothing fancy there. I also have in that vein, a waterproof deck of playing cards. Again, you know, on, in this type of situation, I imagine there's not a lot of electricity or entertainment options. So, you know, play a game with your companions, can uh, keep yourself busy or maybe even use it as a way to uh, kind of break the ice and meet with a group of people that you might want to collaborate with or uh, trade with. On the back there is a zipper compartment that has a few smaller items. I have a box of matches. Again, starting fires is going to be critical in this environment I imagine and I'm not great at starting them without a lighter or matches of some sort. So. Good to have that, doesn't take up a ton of space. I also have a spare pack of batteries. I don't know how much gear I'd be using that would actually require batteries, but I imagine they'd be in limited supply in this type of environment. So always good to have one just in case. And then on the other side, I have a field notes notebook just to be able to take some notes, maybe draw out some maps if I'm communicating with somebody, maybe even to leave a, a message of if somebody's coming up behind me that I need them to follow me, meet me somewhere. I got bit by a zombie and I want to say a goodbye to my loved ones. You never know. So good to have a field note notebook. It doesn't take up any space. And then of course I have a bolt action pen. I'm sure there's a lot of different pens that might be useful in this type of situation. This one at least is reliable and fits right in there comfortably, but any pen should work. And so that's about it. There's nothing else in this main bag at the moment. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, definitely trying to keep the loadout a little bit lighter. These characters in the show and in the video game are on the move all the time very mobile, carrying stuff on their back, so probably don't wanna have a ton of weight or things to kind of worry about if you're quickly moving from location to location or traveling across you know, terrain where you're climbing. Uh, so yeah, try to keep it practical, lightweight, and you know, hopefully it's not something that I'll be needing anytime soon, but if I do, then hopefully this is a good kind of mixture of items to help prepare me for the situations that I might face. And so that's it, that is my Last of Us inspired gear and wardrobe walkthrough. 
Hopefully this video was entertaining and maybe a little bit helpful. And if you have questions on the gear that I featured in the video or suggestions for items that I should add to my go bag or my wardrobe for a survival type situation, definitely let me know in the comments below. I'll make sure to include some links to other roundup videos that I've done where I share kind of my loadout for a more minimal packing type situation or for when I'm traveling for longer term. And I'd also love to hear what you think about this style of video. I've you know, been wanting to do these sort of themed types of videos for a while. I you know, really like kind of watching a lot of movies, TV shows, I read a lot of books, and it's always a fun sort of thought exercise to you know, see what sort of gear these types of characters might use. So if you have a similar interest, if you'd like to see more of these videos, let me know in the comments, also with suggestions for the themes that I should maybe look at. Um, and you know, give this video a like if you wanna see those. Uh, and I want to thank Huckberry for sending some of the gear that was featured in this video and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.